is going to be a short meeting. Anybody else have any other questions? We'll adjourn. <laughs> well, I can promise you this. For two of us, I know it's going to be a short meeting because we're going to another meeting. Miss Garcia, would you take the roll, please? Eva Henry, Steve Odoricio, Jeff Baker. Here. Elise Jones. Here. David Beacom, Greg Stokes, Randy Wheelock, Sean Wood, Chrissy Fanganello, Anthony Graves, Robin Knich, Kevin Flynn, Roger Partridge. Here. Gail Watson, Libby Zabo, Casey Ty, Bob Pfeiffer. Here. Bob Roth. Here. Larry Vidham. Here. David Spellman. Aaron Brockett. Here. Ann Justin. Lynn Baca. Rex Bell. Tara Radloff. Is I'm here. George Teal. Here. Doris Trular. Here. Laura Crispin. Here. Richard Champion. Gail Christie. Rick Teeter. Here. Debbie Nasta, Catherine Whitman, Steve Conklin, Kara Swanson, Joe Jefferson, Steve Yates, Jeff Deacon, Mark Gruber, Daniel Dick, Carolyn Scharf, Here. Lisa Jones, Laura Brown, Lynette Kelsey, Here. Scott Norquist, Storm Glore, Sarah Karis Graves, Casey Brown, Ron Rakowski. Present. Mike Hellman, Brad Weasley. Stephanie Walton, Shakti, Dana Gutwine, Jerry Bean, Isaac Levy, Phil Cernanek. Present. Jacob Lofgren, Larry Strock, Wynn Shaw. Present. Joan Peck, Gabe Santos, Ashley Stolzman. Connie Sullivan, Dan Greenberg, Colleen Whitlow, Joyce Palazuski, Deborah Jerome, Sean Foray, Chris Larson, Kyle Mullica, Jordan Sowers, John Dyack. Sally Daigle, Gary Howard, Rita Dozal, here. Heidi Williams, here. Herb Atchison, here. Joyce J, Adam Zarin, Deborah Perkins Smith, Bill Van Meter. Okay. She just joined us. Okay. Steve just came in. All right. A couple more. <laughs> okay, the first item on the agenda is the September 6, 2017 work session. The minutes were provided to you in the packet that was sent out. If there are no comments or corrections, I will move that we pass on those as accepted. Any comments or questions or corrections? Seeing none, we will publish those. At this time, we will open it up to any public comment. Uh, the chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before the Board of Directors. Is there anyone who has any comment that they'd like to address the Board tonight? Seeing none, guys, this meeting just gets getting shorter. Uh, a couple of things before we start. Uh, I do uh, apologize, but Heidi and I both have a commitment. We need to be back in Adams County for, uh, we'll be leaving at 515. I brought my little friend on the back up here. If anyone has any argument, you can talk to him starting at 515. So if you have opinions or voices, objections, talk to him at 515 right after Heidi and I leave. So you'll end by 5.15. And uh, the idea is to be out of here by 6 p.m. Or earlier, depending upon how interested you are in some sporting event that's going on tonight. Then I would suggest you don't talk a lot. You could get out of here before 6. That will be up to you guys. Uh, the other thing that uh, is important that you continue to be reminded of is uh, your deadline for applying for the nominating committee are getting in your notice that you're interested in a board position. So those are coming up. November 14th is the last day you can apply for the committees. So please uh, remember to look at that, get your nominating committee uh, request in. I think Connie sent a reminder out. We'll probably send one more between now and the 14th. Uh, but get that information into Connie as soon as you can. And I think that was all we wanted to cover, right, Bob? OK. All right. Uh, Item 5, Attachment B, our newly elected first time up Executive Director, Mr. Elected. Rector. Elected? 
Well, well, well. No longer. No, yeah, I know I was going to say. Yeah. Not the, I feel a bit of pressure. Quite frankly, I don't feel any pressure for me, so I'm pretty sure I can get mine done in two hours. It's uh, Brad's one I'm concerned about, his agenda item. I pulled rank and made sure I went first. Um, <laughs> so, let's get going. I, and I'm not going to belabor this, but, um, you know, I think the items we're going to talk about this evening and some of the questions that staff has proposed for, for your discussion this evening are ones that we've had discussions about for the, for the last two, maybe three work sessions. So, um, you know, so there's not going to be anything new. But just to, to, um, um, to refresh your memory with regards to what we're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, we're talking about going to a new, new tip model, a dual model as we're referring to it, where it has uh, basically two pots of money, or uh, one the regional share and one with the, the referred to as the sub-regional share. And um, the importance of this slide is basically, um, it's maybe a little prettier than the last one, but also everything, the importance of this slide is to show that everything ultimately is, um, you know, the projects that are ultimately selected for the next tip uh, everything is is funneled down to the board for your decision. It is you that makes the determination on which projects will be funded, regardless of if those projects are recommended out of the regional share or recommended out of any of the sub-regional calls for projects. So um, you guys have a very heavy lift in, in, in the discussion, as you always do when it comes to the TIP. <clears throat> so some of the accomplishments to date with regards to the, um, to the, the next TIP call, um, we established the TIP focus areas at our September meeting, and those, those uh, three are listed on your screen. Improved mobility infrastructure and service of services for vulnerable communities, or vulnerable populations, sorry. Increased reliability of the existing multimodal transportation network and improved transportation safety and security. So the, the, the TIP policy work group has already been a... Um, uh, working on the criteria for both the regional and, quite frankly, we spend more time on the regional criteria right now, um, and we are ob obviously um, using those those tip focus areas in directing our uh, our evaluation of proposed criteria. And then uh, we also, at our August meeting, uh, 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 approved. Uh, $49.4 million in, in, um, in, uh, in set-asides, in programs, and, and pools. And uh, we're appreciative of that because that then sets a baseline for us to use for um, the allocation of monies between the regional share and the sub-regional share. So for, for today's discussion, we really have two items. We want to talk about the regional share framework, um, what is basically you know, the, the definition of a regional project or the eligibility of regional projects, and also have a discussion about the uh, funding split between the regional and sub-regional shares. So the, on, this, on the regional share, um, sorry, on the, um, on the eligibility, the framework, the regional framework, the TIP Policy Work Group proposal, um, as, as indicated in your packets, and it's not the first time you've seen it, I know, um, defines the eligibility of the programs and projects for, for regional share funds. Um, uh, the pro eligibility for projects are, are, are based on predefined maps associated with the Metrovision Regional Transportation Plan. And what we'd like to have a discussion about today, of course, everything is on the table. If you have discussion items, comments, questions about the actual structure of the, of the framework, please, we're obviously welcome to have that discussion. But the, the one thing that staff would like to have a discussion about is something that was left hanging in previous meetings with regards to uh, should major regional arterials be uh, eligible for regional share funds. Because if you remember, um, the TIP Policy Work Group, in our, our proposal, uh, we just included the highest level facilities, which were freeways. And um, on the sub regional sub-regional funding allocation, uh, the TIP Policy Work Group proposal is a maximum of 30% in, uh, in the regional share pot and a minimum of 70% in the sub-regional share. So, the question is very obvious, is, is that the split? Or should it be something, something else? And uh, I'm sure there will be plenty of discussion about that uh, this evening as well. <clears throat> Just to refresh your memories um, on what that looks like with, this, with the 70-30 split, um, you set aside the uh, 49.4 million that you all did back in August. Um, and take that off the top. And then we have the regional share and sub-regional share. Now, the, the thing I will point out in the regional share, because it was brought up last meeting, and it's something that you all might want to have a discussion about, was that 
you recall that in, in our previous well, way we've always done this, we have a set aside, the set aside pools, right? And then we have the other commitments. And the other commitments in our current tip are fast tracks, first, still first, first and second commitments. And then we had a commitment for Central 70 with $50 million total, 25 in the current tip and 25 in the next tip, the tip that we're having this discussion about today. In the tip policy work groups, white papers that we provided to you all, we included the 70, the, uh, the, the set aside, or sorry, the other commitments, whatever they might be, um, in the regional share. It's not right or wrong, it's just how we did it. Because um, quite frankly, we believe at this point, I'm looking at Todd to help me address this, that basically all, this, all the commitments on the, on the fast tracks will be, we'll probably have like a million dollars left maybe. There's anticipated approximately two to three million dollars of second commitment in principle that will probably not be spent by the time we roll over to this new tip. Okay, so that'll get rolled over as well as the 25 million for Central 70. Okay, so that's now shown in the, the regional pot. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that. And then you can see, and you guys have seen this all before, what that split would look like at 30, 70, 70 then allocated out to the subregions and what the, what the approximate share might be. So, y yes, sir. Sorry, I just wanted to understand what you were just saying. The, so those, those are carryover monies, essentially, That's that you correct. were just describing. So they wouldn't affect how new monies would be distributed. Is, oh, is, that, is that correct? Uh, uh, yes, they would. I, I, if, I, if I said that, I, I, was, I was incorrect. They're not rollover monies. Okay. They're, they're commitments in whatever tip they're in. So, so for All example, right. so the, the Fast Track's second commitments, mm -hmm. <clears throat> not all those corridors are far enough along to decide how they want to spend those second commitments. So what we've typically done is rolled that commitment. So the commitment into rolls over, but it's not like they're dedicated funds from previous tips that are rolling over. That's correct. Over. They would still have to. So you're saying that when those monies get allocated, they would be anticipated to come out of the regional pot. That's correct, as currently proposed. Yes. Okay. And that, and that was two to three million for fast tracks and. 25, 25 or Central, Central 70. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, to, to Aaron's comment, at least I got you, this is where some of the confusion may come in, <coughs> is that we have money that we have committed that's still showing up as available in the regional share. So if you think you've got, just talking off the slide, maybe you think you've got 69 million, but 25 of that is already committed, so you don't have but 44 million. Correct. So I think one of the things that we need to get a resolution on as part of our discussion tonight is, do we take that that already committed and put it into the set aside so that there is a clear understanding of what really is available in the regional and sub-regional? And that's the kind of the direction I think staff is looking for out of this group, which will then be going to the board meeting uh, to get final resolution on. That's exactly right. But your point's very valid, Aaron. At least I just wanted to clarify, when you said we just put it like this, when you say we, is that staff? We, we or is policy. this the, the TIP policy yeah. group it, actually discussed this and decided it would be more appropriate this way, or well, was, this I, not, was this discussed? Well, at least I'm, I, I'm not sure I can answer that question. I'll say it this way. I'll say that it was in the, the white paper that was that was created by the TIP policy work group. I'll be honest. I'm looking at the guys in back who are on TIP policy. I don't know how much discussion we had about it. Um, I think it, you know, because we, you know, we wrote the narrative for, for the TIP policy work group, right? Obviously with significant edits from the, tip, from the rest of the, of the committee. When we wrote that and included, like, you know, the, the other commitments in the regional pot, I guess the way we looked at it was that Central 70, by all definitions, is a regional project. So we didn't even, I mean, I, Anybody else can chime in here, even people from the TIP policy work group, if you guys remember, recall if we had much discussion on it. I just don't re remember, to be honest. <clears throat> Other questions so far? Ms. Christman. I think I can um, at least figure out for my own part the negative of showing the that within the number, which is that it gives a false sense of how much money is available for future projects. Mm -hmm. What is the positive for having <coughs> included it? 
positive. Doug? Well, I mean... <clears throat> is there anything in particular that would say it's one way or the other? Yeah, I mean, other than the fact that, I mean, I think by definition it's a regional project, but of course, I mean, you can make an argument that all the set-asides are regional in nature too, right? So, I mean, again, there's no right or wrong answer in this. This is a policy decision for you all to really make. But I mean, I... Yeah, I, I'm just trying to figure out the reason for one policy over the other, the cost or the benefit of either policy. Yeah. And at this point, there isn't a policy. That's what we're going to set. <clears throat> Mayor Williams. So from Thornton's perspective, we'd prefer um, not to see that, the um, MRA be um, in the regional, because in, in our case, 120th would be the only road that would even, you know, be eligible for that. And so it really, the regional doesn't always benefit the whole region, uh, or the MRAs only benefit some of the region, not all of the region. And so for us, we would prefer not to have that in there. So that's just For the MRA you're talking about? MRA, sorry, yeah. yeah in our but we're talking about, go back to your set aside and your commitments. That's the only thing we're, I think the question right now is where do we put commitments? Do we leave it in the regional share? Or since it's committed, do we put it in the set aside share so that it's not shown as an available funds under regional? Yeah, I, sorry, I jumped but ahead. But MRA is, is going to have to be decided as well. Okay, sorry, I jumped ahead. Now you guys know how I feel in case I have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to get out early, we know. Ms. Jones. So if we, I wasn't sure if we were letting you finish your presentation or if we're diving in. I guess um, I, I see the, the prior commitments as set-asides, and that's how we've treated them in the past tips. So I find it unusual to start doing something different now. And so I guess I would um, strongly favor treating it like a set-aside, taking it off the top, and then splitting the pot after that. And, and Mr. Chairman, if it helps, um, and I, just so you know, we, we, have a, we have a spreadsheet available that we can take that out and so you guys can have a look and see what that looks like and that kind of stuff as we go forth. But I know there's additional questions. All right. Mr. Dyack. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Chair. Uh, I would... Again, I would, I would favor in including that, those projects in the regional share. They are, by definition, regional projects, um, with the caveat, too, of strong consideration that we don't, uh, I guess, make commitments for future boards. Uh, I think the situation we're in now is because of commitments that previous boards have made now on this tip cycle's behalf. So if, if we take those projects out, I would sort of want to maybe reconsider that percentage and make it higher to a sub-regional share to kind of balance that out. Okay. Mr. Baker? The way I look at the difference between the set-asides and the regional share is that projects were going into the regional share, whereas set-asides were mostly programs. Am I wrong in kind of thinking that that was the idea and then the previous commitments of between 27 and 28 million are really earmarked for projects which would lead one to lean towards having them in the regional share but uh, I just open that up for other comment well I, I think in general that's true you know now um, like you know there are some of the set asides that do a separate call for projects that have projects right but they're not individualized projects like yeah okay Shakti um, I guess all I'll say is I, I've sort of agonized about what the number should be and it wasn't until the last meeting that I realized that these set asides are included in the um, 70 percent um, they're in the 30 or the 30 percent right in that breakdown um, so it, it, I would lean t towards um, not including them like we don't include the other set aside okay Ms. Kanich thank you Mr. Chair um, just want to share a little bit of, I think, um, history on the set-asides just generally because it might help us, which is that one of the reasons why the commitments were broken into pieces was so that the amount of money wasn't so large. These were such big, important, catalytic projects 
but it would have seriously limited the amount that could be funded in the current cycle if they were taken in one chunk. So, you know, fast track success took, you know, what, we're in year 14, uh, 13, right, or so of build out. And so if you can imagine a situation where we couldn't make a parallel commitment that carried over time, what kind of partner would we be to that big catalytic system if we could say, well, we can't, you know, we're going to either take it all in one chunk or, you know, we're going to, um, we're not going to be able to commit more than one year at a time. So take your chances with each board, right? I think that this board was, and I was not on it, so just I'm not vested in this this decision, it was made prior to me as well, but it seems to me it's the right decision, which is that sometimes big, huge catalytic projects require, you know, a, a, a time period of phasing of the funding, and that that's good for the project, because the project can then rely on those funds, but it's also good for the entity, because you don't lose all of that money in one cycle. So more local projects got done in year one, two, and three because I-70 was split in half than would have otherwise. And I just don't know that this board would have walked away from I-70. It's the corridor to the mountains. It's the economic, it's a corridor to the airport. I just, it's hard for me to imagine we would have walked away, which means we would have. So, so I think that, um, so if, if, we, if you accept that premise, that it's important to do big, huge catalytic projects and sometimes you have to phase, just like the agencies building them have to phase, then the question is how do you honor that commitment and how do you account for it later, right? So I think that there are multiple options here, but I don't think, for me, I would say that it's not an acceptable option to all of a sudden make other regional projects compete when they wouldn't have had to in the last cycle. So what I think we want to do is you've got to ride out this way that we did it, which was off the top, and then you hold harmless the distribution to the two pots. So one way that you can do that is you can keep it in the set-asides and then do the 70-30 split. Another way that you can do it is you can keep the amount in your head, do the 70-30 split, add that amount to the regional pot, grow the regional pot. You can say that it's coming from the regional pot, but what you don't do is take money away from other large regional projects, right? I think that's, so, so I think that um, just, there, there may be more than one way to do it, it's, it's, but my, the value I would advocate for is not um, changing the rules and saying, oh, that's the only regional, you know, it's a, it, it, the regional pot is that much smaller. I think that this is a big step. Um, another option is that we change the percentages, right? So you could, um, if folks feel passionately that those projects look and feel like regional projects, you don't want to treat them like set-asides anymore, then we do a 40-60 split, you know, but I think the idea is you need enough in that regional pot to do some large catalytic projects. And if you, you know, rob from that pot because of these prior commitments, you, you risk not being able to achieve the goal of what that, that pot was established to do. So, so I, I, I feel like there may be multiple paths, but I do think that we might want to figure out where we're at on the values. And I think if the value is we just want to shrink the amount of money going to big projects, and that's going to be a concern, because I think that the region deserves a chance to have those things um, and, and not make them compete with prior commitments. Okay. Other comments at this time? Otherwise, we'll let uh, Doug continue on. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, what I might do, um, <clears throat> if I can get to it here real quick, seeing we are on this subject, and we'll continue to talk about this. Um, so what we've done, we have a spreadsheet set up here. And hopefully I can show this enough so you can see it. Oh, golly, I hope you can see it. So, <clears throat> so what, what we could do in here, I mean, we can, be, you know, we can do this interactively, right? So, um, so if we wanted to look at a scenario in which we remove the 20, let's say $7 million that will probably be in the other commitments category and just took, took that out of the regional share and set it aside. We can do that. Oh, thank you very much, Brad. That, at least it helps me anyway. Um, we can do that. And I just by punching 27 million in right there. And you can see, so what you have here is, um, this is this is static up here. This is what the current proposal is by the TIP Policy Work Group. And that was the, what you saw on that previous slide. Um, and the bottom one, what you see here, is how that changed. Okay, so um, can everybody see that? Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. 
So by doing it that way, I can basically I can just run. I mean, okay, you you guys said you can see it, so I won't <laughs> I won't read down through all of them. So change your bottom. I think Shakti got. Done. Shakti had a question. Go ahead, Shakti. Can you just clarify what you're taking out, like, because there was the 25 for the 70 corridor and 3 million for fast tracks? Yeah, I took out 2 million for fast tracks. So but I could did, take out... Oh, you did 27? 27, 27 yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Sinanik. Doug, I, at least for me, I would have a better appreciation if we made the decision do major regional arterials fit in the regional pool or do that does that have to come out of the sub-regional pool? Because... Um, you know, there are some major regional arterials um, that if the only place you can deal with that is in your sub-regional share, um, that becomes an issue uh, and problematic um, on that front just because, um, you know, if it's not regional, that's the only place where you get to compete. And, um, you know, my arg argument would say there's some catalytic elements that then are in sub-regional share and would want to ensure that that segment is significant. Mm -hmm. Right, sure. So, so your suggestion is to start with a discussion about the MRAs first? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. If, uh... All right, let me finish up the questions that we've got uh, once we get through Phil's. Are you done for now, Phil? Yep. Ms. Dolsman. Thank you very much. So I guess I'll just chime in that I, I personally favor taking these projects and putting them into the set-asides. And the way I kind of thought about it is that we're, we're making this very transformative shift into this regional, sub-regional um, mode of thinking. And we've said we want most of the money to be in sub-regional, but we recognize these set-asides have value. And so I think this, by not having these in the set-aside, it's almost double counting. So it's almost like you have 15% in the regional share, 15% in these projects that we've really already committed to, and then 70% in the sub-regional. So I just don't feel like it leaves a substantial enough amount in the regional share for me to be comfortable with it. And the reg I'm, I'm not comfortable with the idea in the first place, so doing this is it further takes me to the uncomfort level that, you know, we're really not doing projects that benefit the whole region. We're really allocating this to projects that have local impacts, which are important too. Uh, but for me, this, this exaggerates it to the point where it makes me very uncomfortable with what we're doing. But if we took the projects back out of the regional share to the set-asides, then I think it's it's back to something that's transformative and still has value um, and makes a good good progress for the for the group. Mr. Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I I also agree with Ashley that um, I do think we should take those uh, um, you know the Other committed funds yeah. and associate them with the set asides. Um, I uh, Robin, I I don't, I don't want to do the uh, math in my head, quite frankly. So. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think it's, and furthermore, I don't want to have to explain to one of my constituents that they need to do the math in their head. So uh, I am very supportive of that. At the same time, I'm really supportive of what Phil uh, requested, and we do think about dealing with the MRAs um, as well. Ms. Shaw, I think you're just trying to keep the sun out of your eyes, but I want to make sure. Yes, I know. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any other, any other questions at this point? Otherwise, we'll move to the discussion on the MRAs. Doug, go to the Great. MRA. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, let me just pull up something here real quick. Oh, shoot, wrong one. <clears throat> so you recall we, we um, I think, a couple meetings ago, um, you know, what we showed you as part of the eligibility that was proposed by the TIP Policy Work Group for, for roadway projects specifically was uh, projects that were located on the freeway network, right, would be eligible for, for, for uh, regional share funds. Um, there was a request by, uh, by a member or two or three to um, consider, uh, you know, us putting some additional information together to show you what it would look like if we included other levels of uh, roadways within our region, you know, because we have a roadway classification system. And the next level of roadway classification is referred to as major regional arterials. So 
what we did was so we included um, we had a separate slide in here which I will get to real quickly here that um, that basically illustrates where the made these major regional arterials are within our region and an indication and those are shown in gold up on the screen and in your packet attachment two and um, the capacity projects in our regional long-range regional transportation plan our 2040 plan are shown in blue um, and you can see there's you know maybe a half dozen projects or so that are eligible for capacity in our long-range regional transportation plan and thus are eligible for for tip allocation um, so so we had that discussion I believe maybe at the last meeting um, but we kind of left it hanging about whether we should include them or not and so that brings us to our discussion today. Comments or questions on the MRA? Mr. Brockett. I got a question for you. The, to what extent is the definition of a road kind of fixed in stone? And to what extent is it possible to change the designation? You know, for example, if there's an, a road that's an up and comer, <laughs> you know, that's, right. that might be. Might, might make sense as a major regional arterial. What, what's the process for no, changing that? That's a that? tremendous question, and I'm going to defer to staff here on this in a minute. But what I believe, because I, I wasn't here last time when we did this, before each regional transportation plan, um, we, we kind of set, you know, the, the classifications, and hopefully we catch those up-and-comers. Um, we will be doing that again in uh, connection with our next regional transportation plan, which... So, but I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Steve now, because I'm probably talking foolishness. He'll, he'll know. No, that... That really was it. So a few years ago, I mean, or it's probably 25 years ago before me that the original MRAs were set, and then for the 2030 plan, they were looked at, and maybe a couple were added uh, somewhere for the 2035. Boy, I don't, I don't think there were any modifications for the 2035 plan or the 2040 uh, plan, but we'll be re-looking at it probably a year from now or six months from now for the new 2045 plan. And so in the past, when we did, you know, pretty rigorous analysis, we looked at traffic volumes, we looked at uh, kind of the length of the trips that are served by that. So, you know, an example is 285 in Jefferson County. You know, the volume isn't, traffic volume isn't super high, but it's a key connection, you know, to the rest of the region and frankly to the state. And so there were different criteria that were used like that. Um, we had a couple roads that I think were proposed where um, they then came and said, well, we don't want it to be an MRA. Um, so that's gonna happen and go through that process. Like I said, I think six months or a years, probably start that process again. But, Thank you. But to Mr. Brockett's question, is there anything that is causing us not to be able to revisit the definition well no really I mean you know other than just pro I mean that that's been our historical process right in in connection with our our long-range plan update um, there's always an opportunity mean, I mean let's be honest you guys can do whatever the heck it is you want to do. that's why you're the board <laughs> Jeff did you have a comment or question and I agree that we <clears throat> we can maybe look at those definitions, but we have to be careful not to um, do anything that would um, be in violation of, of federal designations. Yeah. And when, you know, my only concern, of course, is time. Right? Um, you know, if we reopen this at this time, it's going to take many months in order to for us to get to some some uh, conclusion. And we we have to have a call for projects out by you know, beginning of the second quarter of, of uh, next year, of 2018. And I just don't see that's possible. And I just wanted to clarify that these MRA designations have no relation to any federal designation. I just want to make right. that clear that it was, it was a Dr. Cog board thing over the years. So I just wanted to make sure that that was. Mr. Odoricio. Yeah, Steve Odoricio from Adams County. I, I guess what I'm hearing is that there's, in the long range planning process, let me know if I'm correct or wrong, uh, there's always an opportunity to either redefine or redesignate certain roads based on, I could say, graduation or a, a change in that road. I look at this personally, when we look at this, whether to add the major regional arterials, when you look at the map, 
a lot of those roads are, are, are sub-regional in nature, and I think um, it'll be our position that a lot of this type of project would fit very well into what we're talking about today with the sub-region. And so, if anything, there, if there's any one road there that crosses multiple jurisdictions, it would be Colfax. And so, to some extent, we would benefit the most by having two bites of the apple, right? But I guess the issue that we look at is that's the kind of thing along there that would probably be best to be uh, used with our sub-regional um, allocations in cooperation with our neighbors. So I would recommend that we keep it as is and do not include the uh, MRAs. Ms. Shaw. Thank you. I would agree with Director Odoricio. I, I think that um, some of these would definitely rise to the top of any sub-regional projects um, and, and that would happen because we'd be able to see the partnership efforts, the, the focus on multiple regions uh, or sub-regions, sorry, um, uh, for a particular stretch of road. So I, I would echo uh, that which was said. I, I also think with that said, um, we do have to look very, very carefully and make sure that the sub-regional allocations are sufficient to get a lot of this very important sub-regional work done. Thank you. Any other comments on the MRAs, questions or anything, Ms. Jones? Um, well, throughout this conversation, my preference has been to um, add MRA, MRAs to the regional pot just to increase, um, because I have a preference for thinking regionally when we're at the Dr. Cog table, and to allow uh, a greater number of projects to compete in the regional pot and cause us to work together and think regionally seems like a good way to go. And if we were to add those to the regional pot, then it would make sense to have a stronger percentage of dollars going into the regional pot in order to accommodate that. So I see these as very connected. Um, I would say if it's not the will of this group to head in that direction, then another way to accomplish the goal of thinking regionally is to include criteria in the sub-regional allocations that give an incentive for us to um, fund projects that um, span sub-regional boundaries and or involve benefits to the greatest number of jurisdictions. And the, the reason I'm thinking like this is I, I think we all agree that we're the experts for our jurisdictions. What we are not experts at are what's happening across the region on the other side in somebody else's jurisdiction and how all of those actions add up together to have a connected regional transportation system that works together. We can only do that sitting at this table thinking regionally. And so I think it's important for us to make sure that we continue to look outside our little silos of expertise to how we connect with everybody else in the region so that our transportation system works as a whole. So I think it's incumbent that we have some incentive somewhere, however we end up doing this, that we incentivize that regional thinking, even if it's in the sub-regional allocation. Ms. Kelsey? Um, I'm wondering, having never been through this process before, is this a question of it has to be in either one, it can't be in both? Is there a compelling reason why it couldn't be in both? Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may? Go ahead. Um, well, uh, it's a good question and the answer is no, it does not have to be segregated in one or the other. For example, a, a pro if, if it is the wish of the board to include MRAs as part of the regional share, and a project is submitted on an MRA and does not get funded in the regional share. It could then be resubmitted in the sub-regional share, if that answers your question. And I, and I think that that option's already there. But to your point, Ms. Kelsey, is just because you submit it one place doesn't mean that the groups involved, very much to Ms. Jones's point, couldn't reach out collaboratively work together and pool their money to make that MRA a reality under the sub-regional 
I think that's part of where you're going to have to work from the regional and sub-regional areas to work with partners to figure out what's going to be best for all of you. And, and to Alicia's point, it's going to force you to talk to your neighbors, whether you want to or not. I mean, I, know, I don't want to talk to Aurora very often, but they're okay. <laughs> hey, Shakti, I got you, George. So I um, was one of the voices that wanted to see this map. Um, because the if we only look at the bigger roads, I can't remember what they're called, there's like three projects there. And, and maybe those three projects are in fact where our regional funding should go, but it seems like um, this just gives, like including um, so, like Santa Fe and there's some roads there that clearly have a regional impact and so in choosing how we spend our regional dollars we should be choosing like how can we spend the dollars and have the biggest impact and allowing more choices to be in front of us when we're making that determination um, I mean the risk there is it might waste jurisdictions time and trying for it but in terms of how the money's spent I think it just gives us more options so the money can be spent better so I, don't, I mean, I don't have terribly strong feelings, but that's my, that's what makes sense to me. Mr. Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, actually, I, um, I'd like to use your statement you made just a moment ago as a great example on what kind of defined my stance on this, on why I do believe we should have the MRAs in the sub-regional pot, um, because it does force neighboring communities to talk to each other and work together. And I do understand the, um, you know, the, the argument for it to be at a regional level, but the bottom line is, you know, um, at that sub-regional level, then the neighboring communities get a chance to establish where their priorities cross, where they do have, you know, similar priorities. And, I mean, that's a regional goal, too. We're still all at this table, but that allows everybody to the opportunity to say, Listen, our two communities, um, we realize this need here. And it allows us to, you know, have that sub-regional discussion, still preserving the larger, the transformative projects at the regional level, but still giving us, you know, the neighboring communities an opportunity to collaborate and say, you know, this is really important here. This is something that we could really benefit from here. So I am I am in favor of, uh, putting the MRAs in the sub-regional bucket. Okay, Ms. Kanich, I got you here. Thank you, I just wanted to clarify something from Director Shakti, so if the staff can just confirm. So I, I see the map where you may have thought there's only four projects that could be eligible. I think you're probably looking at um, figure C, but I just want to clarify my reading of that. That map, everything on that map, red and blue, would be eligible. It's just that the blue ones don't exist yet. They'd be new projects, whereas the red might be lanes. It might be adding, you know, other types of capacity or safety improvements, as well as funding everything on map A and B and D. So just to be, just want to talk about, aside from the MRAs, what is eligible. And I just read what's eligible is a little broader than Director Shakti did, and right. so I just want to clarify. No, no, I appreciate the question, and let me try to address it. Um, so on this map, now this is, this is what's eligible, freeway capacity projects, what are in our long-range transportation plan, the only capacity projects that are in our long-range transportation plan on the freeway facilities are shown here in blue. So those are the only capacity projects that will be eligible for the TIP. Now, the, the, the entire red network, which is what we are classifying as the freeway network, um, is eligible, projects or funding is eligible to support operational type projects. And they could be safety related, well, I would assume they would be safety related for the most part, but they're operational projects. And, bottlenecks that are less than a mile, those, those types of things. So can uh, I say it back to you to see if I understand? Yes. What you're describing is subcategories of types of regional projects versus 
a, a, so both of those are eligible regional projects. That's one correct. kind is operational, one kind is capacity. Both would count in the regional pod as proposed by the technical group. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Could I ask a clarifying question? Sure, go ahead. It's the reason that the red lines are not eligible for projects is they don't have a project in the RGP for correct. an expansion. If they did, then they would become blue and be eligible. That's correct. So it's just the fact that their RTP project was already completed. There's nothing in the RTP project-wise for the red roads. Well, I'm not sure I quite understand that. So, so in order to be eligible for, to, for you know, capacity, these regionally significant capacity projects, they have to be included in the long-range plan because they have to go through conformity analysis and financial constraint and all that, right? Um, I'm, I'm so let me rephrase that. Um, these are projects that have already been in the RTP and have been built, the red ones. Well. At some point. They had well, to be in I the mean, RTP. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of the network. We, we haven't, we, you know, regardless of what the number of lanes are, they're, they are freeway facilities. All right, let me ask it one other way. If to turn one of these red lines blue, they would have to, to, to get added to the RTP as a new a expansion project. Yes. So they and they would be eligible because they meet the the definition of a regional project. They just have to go through the RTP That's process. That's correct. Okay. Yes. And we anticipate there will be additional ones added. As you all know, well, I hope you know, we're going through a call for projects right now for amendments to the long range transportation plan. Um, so it is so at the time of the tip call we will reflect the most recent version of the regional transportation plan and capacity projects that are included in that. Hang on just a second. Mr. Brockett. So just wanted to agree with some previous comments. I thought uh, Director Teal had good points about um, subregions working together on those MRA projects. Um, and then I thought that Director Jones's point about working that um, into the criteria was a really good idea. Um, I, I think it, I've, I've said this a few times in the past that I think as we hand things off to the subregional uh, process that having good criteria is key. And so I'll put in a word for what uh, Director Jones was proposing about having um, things that cross sub-regional boundaries or work with multiple jurisdictions, um, uh, putting in criteria that uh, support that. And I will say, uh, we have had discussions about that uh, with the TIP policy work group, so. Okay. Mr. Odoricio. Uh, could you just clarify the difference between the uh, annual call for amendments to the RTP versus the 18-month process that's, uh, you know, the long-term? Reiterative process. Do the RTP is it just amended every year, or is these minor amendments versus major amendments? So um, well, it's all the above. What, what's deemed to be regionally significant projects, right? So, um, so we what we do we do what we used to call cycle amendments. We only do it once a year now. So there's an opportunity every year for um, for our member local governments to submit amendments to the long range transportation plan, and um, uh, you know so we're in that call right now. And you know, in order to do so, you you know, the big thing about the fund, the re regional transportation plan, if you recall, there's really two things, right? The plan has to be, um, you know, we have to we do an air quality conformity analysis to make sure that we're below our emissions budgets, <clears throat> and the other big part of that is the financial financial constraint component, right? So, um, in order for a no new project to be eligible or to be included in long range plan there has to be a reasonable expectation that there's revenue to pay for that project. So um, that's not already accounted for, you know, in our financial plan that we currently have. So those are the two big things. And so, yeah, so, yeah. so I'm, I'm trying to understand the 18 I'm trying to understand the difference between the, the periodic redraft of the entire plan versus oh, the annual you. amendments to the yeah, plan. right. And so what's the difference? Because I'm kind of confused as to these these minor amendments that happen every year versus when do we sit down and do the full redraft? Yeah, gotcha. So so yeah, so every every we're required by federal law to update the long range transportation plan every four years. So if there were no amendments to the plan, we were we're required to do that, right? So our regular process for that will take us to the end of nineteen, early twenty for for the adoption of the new plan. In in lieu of that update. We provide an opportunity every year to for our member local governments um, because you know priorities change sometimes, right? To provide an opportunity to 
add a project or, quite frankly, to remove a project. And um, so we do that. We used to do it twice a year. Now we're only doing once a year. Some regions, you know, do it once every two years or don't do it at all. Um, but that's just, just something that historically we've always done. Mr. Sinanik. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the reason why I brought up the question on the MRAs and, and covering that first is um, I believe that putting them in a, in a sub-regional consideration uh, gets it closer to where the impacts are felt and uh, collaboration among the sub-regions that are impacted because I know that citizens are impacted uh, not just by what happens within our city, uh, but what happens beyond or what happens with our county or what happens beyond and that many of them don't pay attention to that but when they're looking at a predictable time um, we we all hear about it so um, that's where I, I am and so my concern is is less of whether um, the commitments are included in the regional share or in the set-asides my larger concern is that the sub-regional pot is significant so that that collaboration can occur closer to where the impact is. And when we're talking about major regional arterials, uh, if that's in the sub-regional pot, that's fine. But we just need to make sure that that pot is large enough to allow for that collaboration to occur uh, so that we don't necessarily have in at, well, they're all going to be inadequate I, I, as far as the levels to get everything done, but less inadequate uh, on that front. So thank you. So let me, we've had, on just the MRA alone, we've had 14 people make comments, which is our fine. We want to make sure everyone has an opportunity. But what I'm hearing is kind of a, a repetition of some of the things that are common. One, I think everybody wants MRAs available. I'm hearing most people are okay putting it in the sub-regional area, but with a caveat that if you have an MRA, there be some level of priority given to one as the people come together and put together a regional project. So in that selection process, we give that a little bit higher priority than the rest of them. I'm trying to summarize, make sure I'm not missing some of the key points that so we can give those back to staff. Are we okay with at least those three points being common to what we're hearing from everybody? <clears throat> Laura? Excuse me. The additional one that you heard was that if you do that, you have to make sure that there's enough money in the sub-regional allocation to make it work. No, and that, that's where I think the, some people are alluding to the point they want to keep that sub-regional pot at a high number. Uh, I got Ms. Kanich, then I'll come back to Ms. Stolzman. Can I just ask the staff to please clarify what's a typical project cost range for projects in this category? Since I, I, and then I have a process question. Yes, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Um, in the last uh, September's meeting, or no, July, geez, July meeting, I think, uh, we provided a list of, M you're talking about the MRAs, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. so some of the, the recent ones, uh, Wadsworth widening in Wheat Ridge, 25 million. We've got a 15 million, 11 million, 6 million. So from the five to 25, the highest one is the, the 25, and that's an allocation, that's not the total project cost, that's yeah, the allocation that's the from Dr. Share. Cog. So the highest one is the Wadsworth project in Wheat Ridge that's going through the environmental study right now. And just to clarify, that's, that's Dr. Cog contribution, not total project Correct, cost. correct. Okay. So I guess, um, I guess I have two additional questions. Um, I'm going to ask the process one first. It seems for, for almost everybody there's an interrelationship between some of these decisions. So I guess one thing I just want to ask is, and I know this is a multi-stage process, but it seems like how when we get to the point of voting on these things in the board meetings, it's important that we be able to maybe tentatively vote on each piece so that folks can see where things are shaping up and then be able to, I don't know, we, you know, if you, know if, if, if you support one piece, you may need to reopen the other piece. If it, it, I just, I think it's going to be a little bit tricky. And um, since we, you know, obviously, um, you know, it, 
takes me back to some of the voting on Metro Vision, right, where one piece <laughs> depends on the other. But I just so for you all to spend some time maybe with the with the executive committee and the and the and the staff thinking about right. how to make sure that folks aren't you know, voting from such a conservative place because they don't know how the second vote will go and the two are so interrelated. It, it, it could really affect how people vote, sure. how you structure it. And I, I, th I would prefer to find a way to take that out so folks can say, I think this is what's really best. And then I think that's what's really best. But, oh, the two didn't turn out right. So now I'm going to, you know, we have to, I, I don't know. So please no, spend I, some time on that. No, I appreciate that. I think it's a great point. Um, a couple things to address that. I, I, were you referring specifically to these two topics or anything going forth? Well, I think it also seemed to occur with the set asides and the regional chair share issue. Right. You know, so I'm fine with the regional share including the set asides as long as the money's added with them. Right. Right. right you right. know, I, I wouldn't yeah. be okay with it if the money was, you know, taken out of the other projects. So yeah. So th I think that and it, it seems like those these this class of decisions. I, I, I only hear two so far, sure. but you know, the night's early. There might oh, be no doubt. I understand. <laughs> no, Robin, I will, I will say this, though. I think, you know, with regards to these two items specifically, that we'd probably package those in, in an action, because I think that, because they are so interrelated, that that hopefully would help. Um, but I, no. But well, I, I think, y y y I've already heard four different packages of votes. Mm -hmm. People who say, more here with this piece, less here with, you know what I'm saying? If you yeah. package them, then someone has to vote against something when they only half disagree or half agree. I, I, I'm actually saying you need to separate them out more and allow us to go step by step and then allow there to be a check-in vote at that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm actually saying the opposite. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think. And, and, the, well, and here's the other thing, right, on, on this. Like, you know, ultimately what we're doing here, we're, we're, we're getting, we're, taking all these votes to help us in, a, in creating the TIP policy document, right, which is the rules of the game. So ultimately, you will be voting on that final product. So we're just taking these intermediary votes in order to give us some foundation to, you know, to progress. But I, 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 perf I understand what you're saying perfectly, and, and we will give that some consideration and thought. Great. And then one, one last question. Um, I, I, I'm fairly agnostic. Um, I, I'm much more concerned about the how much we're putting in the pots related to these decisions than I am where things land, honestly, because I think it's about having enough for big catalytic projects. So, but so knowing I don't have a dog in the fight yet on where these things land, I am concerned about the fact that the size of project you described for some some re, for some sub regional areas, they would never ever have enough in the pot to fit a project of that size. Mm -hmm. Because, they, like, Broomfield is a smaller county. I don't know, I don't know that South, well doesn't get, I don't know, I don't know how well is treated. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, so Douglas, you know, so I guess that's a question. Um, I, I think we both have to make sure that no subregion is prohibited from getting a um, MRA project just because they happen to be a smaller subregion. So that can't happen. That's an unacceptable outcome that someone's just too small and Broomfield would never qualify. And we also cannot have nothing in the regional pot. Right. We cannot have that pot be eviscerated below levels where it can do some catalytic things. Otherwise, I just think that we're fundamentally going too far with a very experimental pilot new thing. <laughs> so I think, I, I don't know how you take that back and make it functional, but I, I think either would be a, a concerning outcome. Ms. Dolsman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You asked if we agreed with several different points, and just as part of good public discourse and debate, I think it's important that dissenting views are on the record, so I just don't agree with everything that you said to give staff direction to, but I do agree that the group generally was going in that direction. Um, I just, I think that, um, you know, when you have that regional map up, I think it's, um, you could quickly spend $30 million on any one of those projects, and that's the level that we're talking about funding the regional pools in the $30 million range. And those projects impact people in Louisville every day. Um, those projects are truly regional, and I, I ex fully expect to see, um, you know, the I-25 South project needs to get added to this at some point in the future. I hope people are working hard to get that on there, but those are the kinds of things that even though they're nowhere near my jurisdiction, they impact people to a much larger extent. It's more hours sitting in traffic. It's more air pollution. 
Um, and, and, and it's not to just to my jurisdiction, it's to all of our jurisdictions. So I think it's really important that we have enough money to fund, to substantially help fund some of these projects. I mean, when I think about 225 and I-25 and, you know, from 1984 till now, what that intersection looks like, like I'm thrilled it's on there. <laughs> but I don't know that you could fix it with $30 million. I mean, and I'm not joking. <laughs> um, so we don't have enough money for everything and we all recognize that but I think it's really important that we do commit to some really important regional projects and when I look at the um, the MRAs I think there are also really important um, projects on there that maybe you don't automatically identify or someone doesn't automatically identify how that impacts the region um, but that connection on Quincy causes backups all the, all the way to I-25 almost every day, and it causes stacking on I-25 if you think about the impacts of Colfax and what that does around Union Station and how much that impacts commuter ridership. I mean, these, these are also very regionally substantial. And when I look at something like 285 out in the mountains, that might not rise to the top in a sub-regional conversation because you're not going to have anybody that has to answer to those citizens that have to live with that air pollution and traffic every day because they're not elected by, except for the county commissioners. Um, but, you know, people from Louisville take that route every time they go to Crested Butte. Or um, people, I mean, we all take that route if we're going to Durango or something like that. So while that might not get funding at a sub-regional point, that definitely has a regional impact. And we would have similar things in Boulder County like that, like going through Lyons. Our sub-regional discussion, we might not favor fixing the problems in Lyons, but everybody in the region goes to Rocky Mountain National Park once a year and that impacts that, that area. So it is a regional issue. Um, and then I guess I'll just close with my last point is that I think it's, a, it's very American to promote competition. And I think it's very healthy to have intense, fierce competition to make us better. Um, I, I look forward to it. I think it's a, it's a very, very good thing. And I would, I would want my project to compete against Lone Tree. Like when I see some of the things Lone Tree is doing, I think like, wow, if we could do that in Louisville, that would be really something else. So I, I favor competition and more projects competing against each other so that we get better and so that we all try to be better as a region. So that, that's where I fall on this. So I don't totally agree with the statements the Chair made. Okay. Going, going back to one thing I want to try to keep in mind is as we've talked about these set-asides for a cycle, if they're taking, if you're to take those out of the regional share, Remember, they're there for a specific period of time. They're not permanent. So if we think about the I-70 piece, we've got that for two cycles, not three. So in the third cycle, that money that would be potential there goes back into your regional pots. So let's, let's keep in mind that this is not something that they, they're gone. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. It's just gone for a set side of time. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yep. I, I just wanted to point out uh, a couple things that I meant to point out earlier. On this, on this uh, MRA map, there are two projects, the two larger ones, quite frankly, that are on here, the, the Colfax project and, and the diagonal on 119. Those projects are already eligible for the regional share um, under uh, one of the other maps, that one, which is managed lane system, or, and quite frankly, on the BRT system too. So those, right? Yeah, there it is. So they're already eligible for the region share. I just want to make sure everybody understood that. It's, um, yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions on where we're at so far? Trying to make sure we cover all of our MRA comments before we move back. All right, everybody's good with your comments so far? All right, Doug, let's get off MRA and go back. Okay, so funding split. Um, so yeah, so it, as I as I alluded to earlier, if if you were to remove 27 million that was previously allocated within the regional share for Central 70 and some of the fast track uh, second commitment in principle, um, this is how it breaks out. So basically, the regional share would uh, decrease by uh, from 69 million to 61.1 million, and the sub-regional pot would go down from 161 million to 142.5. And you can see the difference in the breakout. It's primarily, you know, a couple million in, in most cases um, to the sub-regions. I think it's like four for uh, four or so for Denver and, and, and uh, maybe even Adams. So 
So, so the question is, I guess that's probably the first question is whether we should remove, you know, that that set aside other commitments out of the regional pot. He was supposed to get through that agenda item before he left. I'm very disappointed in the mayor from Westminster. Is that right? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say something just real quick because I've been corrected. Um, the uh, this 27 million it actually wouldn't be 27 million because as as I was correctly told, the uh, the other the fast track second commitments that money is already allocated in the current tip so that money when that pro whatever project it is you know whatever quarters they are when they submit their projects for that we will just include that in the new tip with the old money right yeah so so this number will will actually be 25 million which is the central 70 my apologies Director Teal. Doug, I, I, I looks like you have an interactive uh, spreadsheet here. <laughs> Can you uh, show us um, with the set asides, uh, with with the twenty five million in the set asides? Can you also show us an eighty twenty split between regional and sub regional? I certainly can. I'll do that right now. And it, everyone, you might refer to, I think it's attachment three in your packet. That shows the current allocations as, as, as was proposed. So it might be easier to see. Director Kadich. Can I ask a follow-up question? Um, I asked the question a little earlier about a typical project size of, or dollar amount for MRAs. Can you, so, so I guess it's a two-part question here. I, I'm, I'm re refreshing my memory that there are subcategories here. So under regional share, you've got capacity, Correct. operational, um, and then the regional trails. Can you give me some typical project sizes? Because I think what we need to start doing is testing these numbers with project sizes. So how many projects? might 41 million fund, for example, is the question I'm trying to get my head around and understand, right? So it's not just what's my philosophy of how much money should be in each pot, but what would we have one regional um, capacity project, one trail, and one operational with that, for example? Like, we get, give me some specifics yeah, of like it, what we could actually do. It's a great question because, I mean, what Steve read to you earlier, you know, the 25 million for that Weaver's project and the like, I mean, that's atypical. That's higher than the typical one. But that's only on the MRAs. Yeah. The, the freeway ones are going to be significantly more, right? And, and the whole concept, at least of the TIP Policy Work Group, when we had our discussion was that, you know, our money, you know, is kind of last money in, right? If, the, if they needed a bit to, you know, to basically finish a project. So, you know, in the $25 million range, for example, right. um, that, that would be an appropriate amount for us to share, but you know, 41 million, you, you, you're correct, it ain't going to go very far. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I guess this is a question for the group then. Is it our philosophy that we'd want to be able to do at least one of each big kind of project? Yeah. That we, we as a region wouldn't want a tip that couldn't do one capacity project, one operational project, one trail project. And if so, then staff can tell us what that amount is. And then similarly looking at these sub-regional pots. So What's a, so if, you know, a typical sub-regional project is, you know, there's a category that's probably in the 500 to 200, you know, I think that, this, so there's enough to do a handful of projects here, right? But, so, so I, I think I want to get beyond the philosophy and get to like, yeah, what do we feel? Real what, numbers. Yeah. yeah, well, and what feels appropriate? So it would not feel appropriate to me if what you said to me is you could do one project only and it would have to, you know, you could do one capacity project or you could do 
um, one operational and one trail, but not one of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So yeah. I, I need to understand that to kind of make it a No, story. very good. Steve, yeah, I think Steve has a comment, Mr. Chairman. I mean, I mean, I think a good add-on to that is, so for a, let's just say a large re freeway project or even a large BRT project, something like that, you know, we're talking anywhere from the total project cost, 100 million to a billion. Um, so this share would be, as Doug just mentioned, and as the work group um, thought, would be maybe you put a few million dollars in to help get that final funding, but there's other dollars from other sources. So that's the big freeway ones. On the uh, bicycle pedestrian, for something that's in this regional share, you know, those can be anywhere from three, occasionally ten, but usually like three to eight million, which is the normal pro Dr. Cog allocation for a project such as that. A lot of projects in Boulder and Denver and things like that. Underpasses, uh, when there's underpasses, you're talking $5 million. Now, that may be a type of project where it really isn't the last money in. Right, right. That may be one that's more of a 50 50 or 80%. Yeah. Um, and then the operational projects, those, that's the tricky one. Because operational projects can be, you know, some that we've had around the region, you know, adding a couple turning lanes to an intersection. Um, it can be maybe some minor bottleneck improvement on a freeway. And CDOT's done a couple of those in just the last six months, actually, where they've done a couple of really minor things that might have cost a right. million dollars. Mm -hmm. Or you can have an operational project, of course, that's, that, that's fairly big. But the operational can really have a wide range. Um, of dollars, so it's it's a tricky one. Director Brockett, I think fundamentally we just don't have enough money. <laughs> like, like, you know, I, can we can we pass a motion that grants us a few hundred more million? Because um, because uh, we're stuck. I mean, to Director Kanich's point, I mean, we need to be able to fund real projects, and there's an amount of money here that's just. Not really letting us get it done, but so I'll, but I will return to Director Stoltzman's comments from earlier this afternoon about that. I feel like it, that as as a regional body, we have a responsibility to um, to accomplish some real regional projects that have a real impact across the region. So I you know I can certainly support the the sub regional approach that we're having here, but when I look at you know that forty million level over three years for these four years. Four, I'm sorry, four years, thank you. Uh, four years for these um, uh, hundreds of projects that actually cost hundreds of millions of dollars each, it feels really inadequate. So I, this doesn't seem like the quite the right uh, mess. I don't know exactly what the right formula is, but I feel like we're not really accomplishing enough on a regional level with what we're looking at right now. So in the queue, I have Director Dyack and then Chrisman. Director Dyack. Thank you, Chair. Um, and, and please keep in mind, we also have another regional partner, CDOT. And I mean, to me, looking at this, um, uh, it, I was a private sector guy uh, working with CDOT. I worked on a lot of these roads and got um, got funding to do design and construction work for a lot of these roads too. So, you know, back to Dir Executive Director Rex's point, um, this is these are these are token token amounts for larger projects, um, and you know, really the collaboration comes at the sub-regional level, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, we're talking to Arapahoe County, we're talking to people around us, and I think it's healthy. So, so to me, uh, I wouldn't get hung up too much in the funding level because everything has to be fully funded. Is that, is that correct? To, to get on to a major project? It has to be fully funded. Yeah, yeah. For for like you know, say I I seventy wouldn't come to us and say we need fifty million. If they didn't need fifty million. It, well, but it's it, it's it's last dollar in. Yeah. Oh no, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it's it's last dollar in. So so again, I just want to make the point that, um, you know, CDOT also carries a whole lot of water here. This is more it seems ancillary regional money. Uh, which I advocate, and I also, getting back to uh, Director Brockett and Director Jones, I, I truly believe criteria is necessary at the regional and sub-regional level. I don't think uh, we're at that point to talk about it, but hopefully the technical people in the t TIP working group can do so and then come back to us so we can, we can discuss it further. Director Christman. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, if we're going to talk about kind of the philosophy and policy of it, I don't think it's a choice of you do one big project or two big projects that are, quote, regional, and then you do sub-regional projects that have no regional impact, little ones. I really don't think that's what we're talking about. I really liked uh, Director Jones' uh, approach, um, which is you make sure you get enough money into the sub-regional in order for the s different sub-regions to have the money to collaborate. I actually, with all due respect, think that having you know, the entrance to uh, Estes Park uh, competing with, I, I think our goal is to collaborate and not compete. Um, I think we need to compete in that we need to analyze. But I think, I think that this is an experiment. I think that the subregions with some guidelines will be driven to collaborate and that those um, projects, in many respects, uh, will have a regional impact. Director Odoricio. Can we see the numbers for a 90-10 split? <laughs> we can. So, okay, that makes sense. It cuts it in. That one in half and right, okay. Here, here's what I'm looking at. Um, I do have a question. Is there any reason that sub-regional funds couldn't be used to supplement or to add, be added to a regional share if certain portions of a sub-region want to contribute to a regional project? Nope, no reason. So that's one question? Yeah, theoretically. Theoretically, no. All right. And then also, when we go back to the general, um, I guess, philosophy, I, I don't have a lot of the same concerns I think some of my colleagues do about this, um, the larger sub-regional split. Um, being a detriment to regional collaboration. In fact, I think it'll actually increase regional collaboration because what you're doing is you're allowing all of us jurisdictions to work closer with our neighbors. And so let me just use an example for Adams County. We could work with um, on Highway 7, Boulder and Broomfield and Thornton and all those along the way, while at the same time we can go down and work with Denver and Arapaho on Colfax Maybe you go up to US 85. We're working with Brighton and Thornton. What I look at this as is by giving more to the sub-regional share, you're allowing some of that seed money to be leveraged for other money that doesn't always depend entirely on Dr. Cog. And so when we allow too much to be put in that regional share, you're saying that there's going to be one big winner and a bunch of, I hate to see, say the word losers, but you have, you have fewer you have fewer winners. And what I think you can do is if you have a bigger sub-regional share, you grant more opportunity, almost like seed funding, almost like for these projects to be done all throughout the metro area, to be leveraged, where you can leverage funding from other sources. And I think that's an opportunity for us um, to almost leverage these Dr. Cog funds even more so than they are now. And, and, and I think it's important to note that if there is a particular regional share project, and it may only be out of that 20 million, we may say five goes to some regional trail, 10 goes to something else, but then the folks around that particular subregion where that regional project is could also pitch in some of their subregion. So it's not like you're really, you're not really taking it out. What you're doing is you're just making sure that folks have almost more skin in the game for the overall um, benefit of some of these reg subregional things. And what you're doing is you're almost, I think you're, you're the, we're, we're raising everybody up a little bit more. So in the queue, I have directors Teal, Jones, Baker, Rakowski. Director Teal. Yeah, I think, uh, actually, I think Steve, Steve's really on to something in terms of uh, giving those sub-regional entities the capability to buy in. I mean, uh, we've been talking regional projects. We're talking, you know, we're talking, focusing on the MRAs in terms of regional, sub-regional share. Uh, what bucket they should fit in, um, but we've we've got some fairly large projects around the state, and you know Roger's really been taking point for Douglas County on the I-25 Gap project on South I-25. One thing that we haven't talked about, and and some of you went to uh, uh, we're at CML, and I, I recognize I remember uh, many friendly faces when uh, the North I-25. Um, coalition presented 
and how they were able to bring money to the table to expand North I-25. Guys, that's what Roger and I are getting pitched by CDOT for with I-25 Gap. And it's not just going to be a uh, sub-regional project. Actually, South I-25 Gap, from the work that we're putting together right now, isn't even a regional project. It's a multi-regional project. And yet, to be partners in that multi-regional project, uh, Roger's hearing it, I'm hearing it in Castle Rock, being the northern end of the gap, that we're being asked to contribute. So the reality is, I, I really like where you went, Steve, in terms of you know pointing out that money spent on the sub-regional share is not money wasted. It's not money flushed down you know, uh, a regional toilet, okay? It is money that will be used regionally because a lot of these bigger projects we have, they're not just regional guys, they're multi-regional and statewide, quite frankly. So, um, no, Steve, I, I really appreciate you bringing out those points, and I agree. Director Jones. So one thing that I'm hearing from everybody is that we need to have criteria for both the regional and sub-regional level for collaboration. That is a, a strong point, and that's nice. I guess, as, and as much as I agree with that, I still think we have to have a robust regional pot. And I will give an example. I think the Central 70 project is a regional project. But it would not be my inclination when I get the sub-regional allocation for Boulder County and all the Boulder County jurisdictions are sitting around the table to say, hey, let's give some money to Central 70, right? I don't, th I don't think Douglas County is. I don't think anybody else is. It's not because that project isn't important. It's because my jurisdiction is just a little bit far away from it, and I see my sub-regional pot as what I get to divvy up. So if there are regional projects, I-70 West, maybe even I-25 South that I can understand intellectually is important, I'm still not going to cough up money from a sub-regional pot to pay for that. That should come out of a regional pot that we all decide these are so important, everybody, in a sense, should pitch in, but we're not going to uh, we're not going to naturally come to the table and think of well let's think of all the good things happening around the region and we're going to give money from our sub regional pot, unless you're next to it it's going to be hard for you to understand that or think through that. So if we get down to a situation where we're 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 giving uh, ninety percent to sub regions or even eighty percent to sub regions, we're not going to have enough money to do regional projects. And I don't think saying we're going to collaborate from a sub-regional level is going to cause us to all of a sudden cough up to regional projects that aren't close to our boundaries. So I just want you all to think about that. If I'm wrong, if indeed other counties would automatically think, no, I'm going to give some more to Central 70, let me know. But I don't think that's how this is going to work. Director Baker. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I also want to echo that I, I think Director Odoricio has hit on something and what Director Teal has said too is that all roads lead to Denver. I mean, as you can see on those maps, and so these sub-regional projects will be a benefit to Denver because that's where people are either going into or coming out of. And um, we're very excited in Arapahoe County. We've had three meetings of the towns and, and cities in Arapahoe County and are very excited about the sub-regional. Um, part of that being uh, we're still in the planning phases. We're still looking at draft IRA, I, IGAs um, using Adams County as the model. So I want to say thank you about that. Um, we have an open space sales and use tax that we use for our trails in Arapahoe County. 50% goes to this towns and cities. So the only problem I had about establishing the criteria is that part of the reason we're doing this subregion is to give local control to those communities that know what they need. And um, they may have other funding measures in the various subregions for um, over and above that they're trying to supplement. But our goal would be to use consider these um, sub-regional funds as a way to give our smaller communities matching funds 
for larger projects that would be considered regional. If, if that's, uh, I think, one of the things that we thought would be a great idea. Um, you asked that we put the 90% and 10% there, and that may not be realistic, but in our groups that talked about, that's w what we had discussed, is that 90% for sub-regional and 10% for regional was something we should uh, consider. So thank you. So in the queue, I have Director Rakowski, Odoricio, and Kanich. Director Rakowski. I would suggest to the gentleman from Adams County that he put his comments into a motion, which I'd be honored well, to second. No motions today. <laughs> well, consensus. See if there's consensus. No. Well, otherwise we're going to be here till 9 o'clock. Well, not the rate we're going. <laughs> we can wink your right eye. No. Three times. <laughs> your left um, so let me make sure I understand, Director Rakowski, you're asking for uh, a general consensus of the room of the 90-10 split? Is that what you're asking for? That's correct. Okay. Point, point of order, is that what you, or otherwise I have other people in line, and I'll put you in line. Okay. Um, let's, look at, let's look at a general consensus of uh, uh, a head nod of a uh, Agreeing with the 90-10 split, I'm I'm seeing about half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of how many? I think people are messing me up by putting them up, then putting them down, or. He leaving them down, then putting them up, or it's not a, it's not a case, yeah. I mean, we're we're gonna, we're going to have the conversation again at the board level, yeah. yeah. But um, so I would say that the general consensus is that that is very split. Yeah. Um, it, yes. it, it it looked it looked like yes. it looked like there were nine nine people out of approximately twenty one, I believe, that were nodding or smiling or winking or whatever. <laughs> so uh, so and again, it's going to be. I'm sure a robust conversation at the board level as well. Quick time check, it is 527. Not discouraging conversation, just pointing that out. So in the queue, I have Odoricio, Knich, and Stolzman. Director Odoricio. So um, in response, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the people in this room and, and, and what this board stands for, the organization stands for. I just don't think that, that, that by increasing the sub-regional share, uh, will only promote only parochial interests. Maybe I'm an optimist, but I also think that if there is a regional share or a regional project that would demand or need a greater amount of funding, then on its own merits, you can come to the subregions and ask everyone to pitch in additional amounts, and I think they would be willing to do that. Uh, it, the question is, is if you don't think that, then then what? The alternative is to increase that regional share pot, and then you're forcing it. And I'm saying that I think that there's still an opportunity, if the project is strong enough regionally, for the folks here to, to agree to it, then you're darn straight I think everyone will pitch in. I know we would pitch in on regional stuff as well. I just know that it just means that we have to work that much harder to make sure that regional projects are chosen based on the merits of everyone contributing rather than um, then sometimes just <clears throat> splitting a vote and people not, get, you know, that, that happened, that certain regional projects just happen to be the one that gets the most votes but may not be the one that everyone really would have wanted to contribute to. So, so I want to make a quick comment, and again, I'm not in any way discouraging conversation, but I want to point out that when we originally form this work session rather than what we used to do with the MVIC. Part of the conversation was that 
so that we could have everybody was uh, every board member was welcome at this work session so that we could do some of the heavy lifting here um, and then not have to have Groundhog Day at the board at the full board level what I'm seeing this evening is that I think when we when this goes forward to the board we're gonna have a lot of the same conversations with more people in the room um, and so uh, again I'm not trying to curtail anything tonight I'm just saying that I think that we're we're probably gonna reproduce this at the board level with more people contributing to the conversation um, director Kanich thanks mr. chair and and I appreciate that comment I think that in my seven years on the board this is the biggest departure from prior practice we've ever debated and so if there's an item that takes several meetings to redebate this might be a worthy one I, I actually don't think that's a failure of accomplishing our duty I think it means that we're being thoughtful and I think you know efficiency I'm, I'm a freak for it but um, this is a significant departure and just um, I guess I'm just going to, you know, having kind of asked questions and shared some thoughts, I think I'm going to try to sum up where Denver's position is. And, and this is, um, you know, we have had consultation. I only have one voting member here, but we have really spent a lot of time talking about this as a jurisdiction. So we supported and actually advocated for looking at how other regions um, did their allocation because of the contention around small communities and the contention around um, some of those issues. So I, I actually was personally someone who advocated for looking at the region where we took this model from. But the approach that that region takes is not, um, one, it was built over many cycles, and two, they don't do as dramatic of a, of a, of a distribution as we're seeing here. So, so we've stepped further than they have with less experience. <laughs> And I, I think that's important to note. Um, so I'm going to ask Mr. Rex if you can please go back to the 30 split. Denver is not comfortable even with a 30-70 split for a brand new process with no history, right? So there's two issues here. And I, I think I shared the first one before. $60 million is just enough to do a typical investment in an operational project, a typical investment in a capacity <laughs> project, and maybe a bike or a ped project or two. So maybe four projects come out of that. That doesn't feel like enough to us, but I could live with this as a compromise. Understanding that there is something in the typical funding range here. The chart that was up before would not even allow one typical capacity project, maybe, to be funded with no bike ped, no operational. That is not, I can't say to the, the folks I represent that I am going to reduce funding for this type of project below any level. <laughs> and walk away and say one project that we all agree on. That's, this, project, this body has gone from agreeing on every project for 50 years to now only having to agree on one project. That to me is not a responsible path towards change. I am, believe me, I'm a believer in change and I, I advocated for this. But it has to be thoughtful and I think it has to be intentional. I, I can live with a regional share and my jurisdiction, with some heartburn, <laughs> can live with a regional share that includes a couple big catalytic projects that we agree on because it's so important for us not to lose the art of how to do that if for no other reason. And then show us these great sub-allocation processes, show us the sharing, show us the strong criteria Right, because at the end of the day, all that stuff also has to be in place for me to be able to live with this. Right, so this is like a tentative yes to 30%, with the idea that we then have to also reassure that these processes are transparent. This can't be elected officials in a private room dividing up the pie. We are going to have to really show, and this is going to be work. This is going to be a lot. We're going to have to replicate this table and this discussion today times seven, probably times two, because everyone will be new at doing it. So it'll be long, painful, brand new. I believe actually we can do it. I actually do believe in it, and I wouldn't be willing to vote for this otherwise, but 
I, I not only can't live with 90-10, I, I would strongly, and my jurisdiction would strongly have to say that it, we, I would have to say, I, it, I think it would be not responsible. So I, I am willing to go here as a compromise. I invite others to maybe step into the space of compromise on, and, and being able to say, let's prove our concept, and then let's check back after a cycle. Um, that is the path of other regions that have gone. We've been a good leader, and we've been good at following good methodical best practices and hammering out tough things. So I ask folks to stay in the discomfort for a minute long, maybe not today, maybe between now and the board meeting, but I invite folks to step into some compromise space and see if we can get this done. No one ever thought we would get there on the um, MetroVision plan. I look at our ch chair who was chair then, um, but we did. And it took some movement. So I ask folks to do some of that movement. I, I think we still have it in us to get there. So, um, but I, I, this is where I can, this is the lowest I can live with. So I have uh, Stolzman, Pfeiffer, Cernanek, and Vidim. Thank you very much. Director Stolzman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So I think to move it, just to move us forward, which I think was the idea of trying to get a consensus, it would be good to bring a few different levels to the next meeting so that we can vote on them. And I think we need to have this discussion at the board meeting so we can take votes and then move forward. I think that's really productive. But I think it would also be helpful to get the information people have asked for tonight for the next meeting. So I, I heard information wanted on a number of typical projects this would cover, and I think that would be helpful for both pools so like if you did a 90 10 or a 70 30 or a 50 50 how many projects could you fund of those types of projects um, and I heard um, earlier in the meeting that it's really important to address this issue of the set aside separate from the issue of the funding split because it does change my position on where I'll support the funding split based on whether the money's in the set aside or not director Pfeiffer thank you I, I I'm just going to say I absolutely agree with uh, Robin Kanich. I mean, you're spot on. I, my fear, I had a hard time with 3070 even. Um, here, here's why. We worked really, really hard over the last, what, three years changing how this organization governed and to be more collaborative and stop having what I always refer to as the gladiator, the bull ring right here. The Everything was happening here. We were all fighting to a very collaborative. Now we're looking at taking that collaborative uh, regional board, dispersing it out so there's sub cogs that are having the debate. And I don't see a, I'm sorry, I'll disagree with uh, Mr. Odoricio, that I cannot see that the county will come back to me and say, county can, who's going to vote to give up my sub region share for? the I-70 Central Project or for I-25 South Project. I won't. So now you're going to say, well, we need multiple votes to even come to this table to allocate or move money to support another project. It will never get done. And so logistically, I don't see that having sub-regions vote moving money out of the sub-region would ever happen. And so we defeated everything we worked hard to to be collaborative and think about each other around this table. Um, I was very open with the subregion. I'm probably the most person about local control, and I'm in D.C. almost every month talking about local control. And I believe in getting the money down to the local lowest level. But for this region, um, I don't think we can swing from 100% to a 90-10. That is just unbelievable for me. And I agree. Process, procedures, transparency, all of those factors have to be proven, have to be critical. Um, you know, Dr. Cog's finally got a good, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Cog looks good now when, when it didn't. We were a laughing stock uh, for many of our staff would say that. But we actually really do, and no, that's not to our staff, this is just, <laughs> okay, not this staff. It, it's the people at this table. We would not always, they, we were the laughing stock. The, whoever elected were here. But the point was, the point was, is that I, I think 70-30, I could probably agree with, I would agree with Robin. I, it's probably even too high for me as well. Because we do have some regional projects we need to keep in mind still. And I just don't think 60 million when I look at a grade separation in my city on a, a, that would never surface to this level, would even hit the sub-region pot at all. It's $27 million for a grade separation on a two-lane road. 
I have to have it because I need my emergency vehicles. I guarantee you none of you will ever want to ever support me. Even my subregion probably would never support me on it. It just wouldn't. So so we got to think. I, I'm I'd a, give you a hug, though, Bob. Okay, thank you. So, <laughs> so one thing I want to also keep in mind is if we ever launch that far into the 90-10, I would ask us, how would it be if, if we would go back and say, well, let's make it 70-30 now? Do you think we would agree as a collaborative group that we would take more away from the subregion and put it back in the regional? It would be a very unique board to pull it back, I would think. So just, just think once we switch to a direction, I don't think we can reverse it as easily. So I'll get off that, and I'm, I'll be leaving here soon, too. <laughs> Actually, I do have one more. I have a real problem with us talking about this at the next board meeting because a lot of us are at the NLC, and that is not fair for us that are not at this table to have this type of conversation uh, when the, the National League of Cities, a lot of us are out of town and are alternates. So we can have a discussion. I would encourage this board not to be voting on anything until we have not a big event like that going on when there's 15 of us probably gone. So just would like to show that. Um, so in the in the queue now, I have Cernanic, Vidim, Odoricio, and Baker. Director Cernanic. Yes, um, I'll echo uh, Director Pfeiffer's comment about the National League of Cities taking some of us away. Uh, so um, I will mention that we are m missing some components to make this a fully adult conversation, in my opinion. Uh, one is we have not set the regional principles and the evaluation criteria that we're going to be using that is going to incentivize us, to use someone else's term, I believe director from Director Jones, um, to be doing the right things for the region. And we don't have that information to actually give us comfort in anything we're doing here. And we should be looking at how do we do a list of projects and these are, excuse me, these are going to be partial fundings for specific projects because none of them are going to be fully. They're going to require match levels because this is federal dollars for the most part we're dealing with. And the performance criteria that's going to be used uh, along the various criteria projects, we don't have that information yet. And to be in a position to make a, a as educated discussion as, as we can have, and this goes back to Robin's point of it may take us several meetings of discussions, uh, not just that a few of us may be at NLC, but uh, to get those pieces of information to say, hey, we've actually set the platform. Here's going to be our performance criteria, evaluation criteria at the sub-region and the regional level so that we know we're going to be getting good stuff. This stuff isn't going to be petty at the sub-regional level from what I've seen of our discussions. Okay, so, you know, this is going to be stuff that's going to, and many of those items are going to be across sub-regions. So I'm, I'm sitting there and saying, hey, at a local control level, I have a lot of confidence that there's really going to be some great regional thinking, even though it's going to be local folks. I said I'd give you a hug, but <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know what the evaluation criteria is. And, Doug, I, is, you might want to also outline the expected process because I understand, understood, our first discussion is going to be we're going to establish the regional projects before we hand it off to the subregions for consideration. And that's going to be, if there's something that's, that's short, we can have some of that discussion at the regional laughing stock level <laughs> as using uh, director Pfeiffer's term uh, in that and so I you know I have a lot of uh, confidence that you know we're, we will end up doing the right thing but we don't have all the information to make it comfortable yet for ourselves director Vidim so I would like to uh, add my voice to those that have uh, spoken for the 90 10 split I believe that uh, the MRA should be in the sub regional category and as uh, Director Chrisman spoke, uh, it would be critical that the sub-regional fund, the sub-regional category is properly funded. So that's, that's that item. However, I would like to uh, add one more briquette to the flames, and that is that uh, often in these sort of uh, uh, agreements, 
uh, smaller communities uh, wind up with uh, the short end of the stick or no stick at all. And so I would like to add to the conversation the thought that smaller communities would receive 10 percent uh, out of the sub-regional category, 10 percent would be designated to communities with a population of less than 20,000 people. Thank you. Director Odoricio. I, uh, I, I actually like uh, Director Kanich's idea of asking staff to come back and say how much does each allocation percentage uh, equate to a number of projects as through the regional share, but also likewise the analysis could be to go to each of the subregions and ask uh, for the same number of how many regional projects could also be, um, you know, started with the subregional share being higher as well. And so what you may have is you may go from having half a dozen regional share projects if you can get to 30 percent and you're worried about having one or two if you're at 90 percent, um, but also sub-regional share if you have 70 percent versus 90 percent, you may be creating two dozen projects throughout the whole metro area by having seed money and spreading that out. I think that's important to note is that any estimates on number of projects paid for or that could be um, initiated uh, include both that analysis and the regional share as well as the sub-regional share. And I think it is important to know. I, I, I would agree entirely um, with the fact that really this comes down to even projects that are in the sub-regional that are paid for or at least started with the sub-regional share also have to have, um, they have to be regional projects based on criteria. And I do agree that that is going to be an important um, element in us determining uh, how well everyone's going to play in the sandbox and truly, you know, are you, are you putting in a, a driveway in front of Bob Pfeiffer's house with it or are we? I'm not an Adams County <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was a, I, I set that one up. <laughs> you know, are we? I think that was asphalt. Yeah, that was, I don't, I don't recall. Um, but like, are we talking about projects that are going to be like that, that are truly parochial in nature? <laughs> Or are we talking about stuff that, based on the criteria, uh, is still going to be regional projects? And I agree with uh, uh, Director um, Sunanik that we have to uh, make sure that it's that criteria that will help make sure that even projects paid for in the sub-regional share. That was a T. I set that up on the T <laughs> for him to hit that. I didn't, um, but that's how I think, I think that's an important element to this entire conversation. I, I almost feel like based yeah. on that last interaction, we should just adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Director Baker. I just wanted to add that um, in our discussions with um, our sub-regional forum that we're trying to establish, uh, which I believe is up to 14, um, including Arapahoe County, um, we did discuss the really regional part of it and how it would even be better for our sub-regional to um, include, for instance, Parker Road, starting in Douglas County, coming up through Arapahoe County into the city and county of Denver, was one of those roads that we thought would be given higher consideration because of its regional um, component in that. And I know what we've heard it talked about as being an experiment, but this is a tried and true. It may be experimental here, but it worked. And we've heard from the Seattle area that um, it, it's done well. So I would also encourage staff to maybe give us uh, some, Dr. Cog staff, to give us some idea of where they started and where they are now and, and maybe what their journey looked like to get to where they are now. Um, and we also are in favor of the MRIs, M-R-E-A, sorry, MRIs, medical things. <laughs> MRAs, meals ready to eat, to be, no, to be um, added to this sub-region. Thank you. <laughs> From medical procedure to something to eat to <laughs> Director Stolzman. Thank you. I just had a comment on the scheduling. I, I, I just... Um, 
I'm able to attend the meeting, and so I hope we have substantial material to cover. So I would rather not come at all if we're not going to talk about anything because there are people absent. So I would prefer canceling if we have a very light agenda in light of people missing, rather than make people come all the way down to talk about nothing. That would be my preference. I'm also open to a special meeting or rescheduling to another time or carrying on. But I just think, you know, it's disrespectful of people's time to have us come down here if we don't have substantial material to cover. So, so just a, a comment on that, um, a couple of comments. I think that we do have enough of an agenda to move forward. But more importantly, um, that is when we have to seat a nominating committee. So we, we're pretty much required to have a meeting on November 15th if for no other reason than the nominating committee and the people that have submitted their interest in being on the executive board. Um, but I think that as an example, I think that the other action or the other uh, item that we had tonight, we're obviously not going to get to, so that can be moved to the uh, 15th agenda as well. And I would, um, I would say that obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, it seems obvious to me, that based on the conversation and the interaction we've had, that we're nowhere near having this go before the board on the 15th, and we need to bring it back to this group uh, at our next available meeting. And I'll call on Director Partridge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've actually been pretty quiet tonight. Certainly, I think there's been a lot of comments that I agree with all the way along, and I think it's a great, great to have our robust discussion. So I'll keep my comments somewhat general, but what I think we really take into account is we're, we're looking at our jurisdictions, but there's not one driver, one constituent, one citizen that considers a border is the end of the road. There is no borders when it comes to driving. So I really, really see that individuals that drive almost drive in a sub-regional area on their, most of their activities, whether it's work, play, or or just regular activities. So I really think that we're going down the right path on sub-regional. Uh, I beg to differ regarding our past tip cycle. We can submit the sub-regional regional approach to our past and we have a pretty good formula uh, based out of that. Staff has provided that for us now. That's for that to be come back in, in future meetings. So I think we've already done that. We can put these two models together, separate them or bring them together and, men, and, and match them. Uh, but what I really want to know from staff, and uh, scheduling I think is an issue, that I think we're getting to the point where you're needing a decision to really move on. And I just uh, caution us that we push this out. We push it into January. I think we're way too far out. I think it really puts staff in a, in a predicament. That's what I'm hearing from the, the TAC is that, hey, you guys really at a decision point. What are you going to do? And, and maybe hear from Director. No, uh, uh, Director, thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. Um, you know, there is some urgency. I'm not going to lie with regards to this. Um, you know, I mean, really, we have to get the TIP policy document approved sometime in early part of it, 2018, in order to do a regional call first and then the sub-regional calls. Now, with that said, um, I do believe there is time for an additional uh, work session meeting. Uh, and quite frankly, when I wrote this agenda originally, um, and I made reference to that we would, we anticipated action at the November 15th meeting, I didn't know NLC was taking place. Um, so, uh, so I mean, I think in, in lieu of that, I think it's, it is appropriate maybe that we take, and we do have enough information to provide you all. I got some other things that I think would be relevant to the discussion that for, for your edification that, so that, I'll, that we'll provide to you at the December work session meeting. Um, so, so yeah, but I think, you know, at, I would request, I'm not asking for a promise, but I hope that we can get to a point where we can take action at the December board meeting, which is December 20th. I know that's an issue, <laughs> but just throwing it out there. And at that, with that, that was, thank you for bringing it up. That's my point too, is going to be December 20th throughout the possibility as uh, Director Stolzman referred to, is it a possibility of a a meeting the week before that a special meeting maybe that won't work because the schedules it's a very difficult time no doubt but but just make everyone know on December 20th could be the key meeting regardless whether you're going to be out of town right right and we can talk in turn I don't know if it's possible to move it up a week or something like that we'll we'll, we'll have a look and see um, with regards to that 
So I'll just mention that it was pointed out that the November 15th meeting is also the one that we have to uh, adopt the budget. Yes. So, uh, Director Kanich. Thanks. I just want to pick up the process thread for a second. Um, I, I guess I'm a little concerned about feeling rushed on a decision that's this important. And in particular, um, nothing's final until the TIP is adopted. So that's correct. You, so I just I want us to be clear. What you're asking for is a preliminary vote that has no legal binding effect until however many months later when we adopt the entire policy. Correct. Right? So I guess I, I actually think that I think it makes sense to do a check-in vote like that, but I want us all to be clear that, like I've said earlier, if I think for many of us, the criteria that then apply to these other things might change the, and so so I think you know there's this sense that you think this has to be done first but the truth is that if the criteria aren't good enough then the percentages are going to be problematic at the end and so everything stays open technically until the end so so I guess in that That's regard I, it's not like I want to punt down the road I think we have to keep slogging through um, but I also, I, I don't want a false deadline being placed on one of the key decisions, as to Phil's point, when all of the other decisions haven't yet been made. So, so I think that we do our best maybe to have a, you know, a vote in December, but one, we need to be especially clear that it's not legally binding Correct. until the final vote on the policy, because so, that has not been said before now. And then secondly, if we can't, if we're at a, if we're at a, a, a 55 45 vote I don't think we you you keep working on the other pieces of the policy oh and we're then working we, on it <laughs> but you know what I'm saying so yeah, I, 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 I I think do. that I think the criteria and the approach and all that other stuff could impact this this was the point I was trying to make earlier no, so sure. so I and we've said before I mean I I think I, I will just I will bring up the opinion that some folks shared when we said that even if we technically have a vote that's you know 51 percent how comfortable do we feel making a major change in policy by a thin margin like that so so I think that we need to have a little bit of come to Jesus about that too that it may be that we are redebating this somewhat at the end and that is not a flaw in process and that's what happens and, and I just don't want there to be I don't want fear tactics rushing people into what I think is the biggest decision this board has faced in a number of years no oh, very good so so I want to, uh, Director Pfeiffer, I thought you were gone. <laughs> well, as, as Robin points out, this is <laughs> very important. But, but I think one of the questions that we, I, don't, I don't think we've got a clear answer on is on the MRAs. I mean, are they in the subregion or the region? Because for them to come back and give us criteria, wouldn't we need to know the MRAs and where they land? I, I don't know if we answer. I'm, I know I'm looking at you, Robin, but I'm looking at the group, I guess. You know. Well, Do, uh, no? And, and okay. I guess... Just, uh, just clarification for me. Yeah, and I guess I would look at staff, and it, it, I mean, I, I don't want to put too large of a burden, but that's something that is one of the moving parts that you can bring back as well, right? Sure. This is what it looks like at different levels with it in the regional, and this is what it looks like at different levels in the sub-region. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, because quite frankly, I mean, I, I don't think the, it, it matters if the MRAs are in or not, or at least having that decision. Because it's it's more the criteria is related to a specific project, right? So the criteria I hope would be universal enough that could be applied to any project, regardless of classification of roadway or whatever it is. Yeah. So I want to make one last comment, and that is that uh, most people around the table know this, but for for those who might not, one of the reasons, and other people can correct me if if they feel that I'm misspeaking but one of the reasons that we we decided to look at this regional versus sub-regional in a different allocation format is that before when we had project specific uh, category categories what would sometimes happen is that uh, we had a certain percentage or a certain dollar amount that went for a certain category and once that was met there was a cutoff point and there could have been a project in a different category that really helped the region or helped a couple of jurisdictions uh, in a great way, but it got overshadowed by the fact that, you know, we had the categories lined out with certain dollar amounts assigned to them or certain percentages assigned. So that's, that's one of the biggest reasons we went to this or talked about going to this new 
regional and sub-regional is, is to allow people to have that collaboration to say it doesn't have to be this particular type of project. It's just what project is the best for this area. Um, so uh, I want to applaud the, I mean, it, I'm, I'm, I know it gets a little frustrating sometimes, but I want to applaud the work that was done tonight. And um, I agree with uh, with a lot of the last assessments that, you know, we need to make sure that we do it right the first time. So we'll keep working at it. Um, this obviously will not be at the board meeting on the 15th, like I mentioned. Staff has their uh, their marching orders to bring back as much information as possible to help us make good policy decisions at the next working session here. Herb will be here. Thank God. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah, that, that's true. That's that's the other moving part here that, you know, we all face as elected officials is there might be new faces around the board as well. So um, at any rate, at that, at if, uh, if, I, may, if I may, real yes, quick. Yes, Executive Director Rex. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Real quick, um, as you guys pack up, um, I just want to alert you guys to, um, you remember two the September board meeting, uh, Deputy Chief Savage presented on, on first responder safety. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and um, um, it was requested at that time, and it was then further discussed at the October board meeting to provide some letter or a resolution in support of first responder safety, and in particular, traffic inc incident management, traffic, I can't, sorry, traffic responders, Traffic Incident Response Week, which is November 13th through 19th. So what we've done, we've created a resolution which uh, the Dr. Cog Board will take action at the November 15th meeting on. But we're also going to send to you all a template for you to consider um, as part of your own council meetings. Um, so we're hoping to get that out, if not tomorrow, Friday for sure. But we're finalizing it right now. So I just wanted to get you, give you a heads up that that's coming. Very good. And at 6 o'clock on the nose, we are adjourned.